Well, hello, and welcome to week four of Advent and week four of a read-through of For the Time Being by W.H. Auden. This week's section is called The Summons. Let's begin. Star of the Nativity. I am that star most dreaded by the wise, for they are drawn against their will to me. Yet read in my procession through the skies the doom of orthodox sophrosyne. I shall discard their major preservation, all that they know so long as no one asks. I shall deprive them of their minor tasks in free and legal households of sensation, of money, picnics, beer, and sanitation. Beware! All those who follow me are led onto that glassy mountain where are no footholds for logic, to that bridge of dread where knowledge but increases vertigo. Those who pursue me take a twisting lane to find themselves immediately alone with savage water or unfeeling stone, in labyrinths where they must entertain confusion, cripples, tigers, thunder, pain. The First Wise Man To break down her defenses and profit from the vision that plain men can predict through an ascesis of their senses, with rack and screw, I put nature through a thorough inquisition. But she was so afraid that if I were disappointed, I should hurt her more, that her answers were disjointed. I did. I didn't. I will. I won't. She is just as big a liar, in fact, as we are. To discover how to be truthful now is the reason I follow this star. The second wise man. My faith in that time's constant flow lay real assurance, broke down on this analysis. At any given instant, all solids dissolve, no wheels revolve, and facts have no endurance. And who knows if it is by design or pure inadvertence that the present destroys its inherited self-importance. With envy, terror, rage, regret, we anticipate or remember, but never are. To discover how to be living now is the reason I follow this star. The third wise man. Observing how myopic is the Venus of the Soma, the concept ought would make, I thought, how passions philanthropic and rectify in the sensual eye both lens flare and lens coma. But arriving at the greatest good by introspe introspection and counting the greater number left no time for affection. Laughter, kisses, squeezing, smiles. And I learned why the learned are as despised as they are. To discover how to be loving now is the reason I follow this star. The Three Wise Men. The weather has been awful. The countryside is dreary. Marsh, jungle, rock, and echoes mock, calling our hope unlawful. But a silly song can help along yours ever and sincerely. At least we know for certain that we are three old sinners, that this journey is much too long, that we want our dinners and miss our wives, our books, our dogs, but only have the vaguest idea why we are what we are. To discover how to be human now is the reason we follow this star. Star of the Nativity. Descend into the fosse of tribulation. Take the cold hand of terror for a guide. Below you in its swirling desolation, hear tortured horror roaring for a bride. Oh, do not falter at the last request, but as the huge deformed head rears to kill, answer its craving with a clear, I will. Then wake, a child in the rose garden, pressed happy and sobbing to your lover's breast. The narrator. Now let the wife look up from her stove, the husband interrupt his work, the child put down its toy, that his voice may be heard in our just society, who under the sunlight of his calm, possessing the good earth, do well. Pray silence for Caesar. Stand motionless and hear in a concourse of body and concord of soul, his proclamation. Recitative. Citizens of the empire, greeting. 
All male persons who shall have attained the age of 21 years or over must proceed immediately to the village, township, city, precinct, or other local administrative area in which they were born, and there register themselves and their dependents, if any, with the police. Willful failure to comply with this order is punishable by confiscation of goods and loss of civil rights. Narrator. You have been listening to the voice of Caesar, who overcame implacable necessity by his endurance and his, by his skill has subdued the welter of fortune. It is meet, therefore, that before dispersing in pious equanimity to obey his orders, with well-tuned instruments and grateful voices, we should praise Caesar. Fugal Chorus Great is Caesar, he has conquered the seven kingdoms. The first was the kingdom of abstract idea. Last night it was Tom, Dick, and Harry. Tonight it is S's with P's. Instead of inflections and accents, there are pre prepositions in word order. Instead of aboriginal objects excluding each other, there are specimens reiterating a type. Instead of wood nymphs and river demons, there is one unconditioned ground of being. Great is Caesar. God must be with him. Great is Caesar. He has conquered the seven kingdoms. The second was the kingdom of natural cause. Last night it was sixes and sevens. Tonight it is one and two. Instead of saying, strange are the whims of the strong, we say, harsh is the law, but it is certain. Instead of building temples, we build laboratories. Instead of offering sacrifices, we perform experiments. Instead of reciting prayers, we note pointer readings. Our lives are no longer erratic, but efficient. Great is Caesar. God must be with him. Great is Caesar. He has conquered the seven kingdoms. The third was the kingdom of infinite number. Last night it was rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. Tonight it is to a T. Instead of quite a lot, there is exactly so many. Instead of only a few, there is just these. Instead of saying, you must wait until I have counted, we say, here you are, you will find this answer correct. Instead of a nodding acquaintance with a few integers, the transcendentals are our personal friends. Great is Caesar. God must be with him. Great is Caesar. He has conquered the seven kingdoms. The fourth was the kingdom of credit exchange. Last night it was tit for tat. Tonight it is COD. When we have a surplus, we need not meet someone with a deficit. When we have a deficit, we need not meet someone with a surplus. Instead of heavy treasures, there are paper symbols of value. Instead of pay at once, there is pay when you can. Instead of my neighbor, there is our customers. Instead of country fair, there is world market. Great is Caesar. God must be with him. Great is Caesar. He has conquered seven kingdoms. The fifth was the kingdom of inorganic giants. Last night, it was heave-ho. Tonight, it is wee spree. When we want anything, they make it. When, they dis when we dislike anything, they change it. When we want to go anywhere, they carry us. When the barbarian invades us, they raise immovable shields. When we invade the barbarian, they brandish irresistible swords. Fate is no longer a fiat of matter, but a freedom of mind. Great is Caesar. God must be with him. Great is Caesar. He has conquered seven kingdoms. The sixth was the kingdom of organic dwarfs. Last night it was ouch, ouch. Tonight it is yum, yum. When diseases waylay us, they strike them dead. When worries intrude on us, they throw them out. When pain accosts us, they save us from embarrassment. When we feel like sheep, they make us lions. When we feel like geldings, they make us stallions. The spirit is no longer under flesh, but on top. Great is Caesar. God must be with him. Great is Caesar. He has conquered seven kingdoms. The seventh was the kingdom of popular soul. Last night, it was order, order. Tonight, it is hear, hear. When he says, you are happy, we laugh. When he says, you are wretched, we cry. When he says, it is true, everyone believes it. When he says, it is false, no one believes it. When he says, this is good, 
this is loved. When he says, this is bad, that is hated. Great is Caesar, God must be with him. Narrator. These are stirring times for the editors of newspapers. History is in the making. Mankind is on the march. The longest aqueduct in the world is already under construction. The committees on fen drainage and soil conservation will issue very shortly their joint report. Even the problems of trade cycles and spiraling prices are regarded by the experts as practically solved. And the recent restrictions upon aliens and free-thinking Jews are beginning to have a salutary effect upon public morale. True, the western seas are still infested with pirates, and the rising power of the barbarian in the north is giving some cause for uneasiness. But we are fully alive to these dangers. We are rapidly arming and both will be taken care of in due course. Then, united in a sense of common advantage and common right, our great empire shall be secure for a thousand years. But if we were never alone, or always too busy, perhaps we might even believe that what we know is not true. But no one is taken in, at least not all of the time. In our bath, or the subway, or the middle of the night, we know very well we are not unlucky, but evil. That the dream of a perfect state, or no state at all, to which we fly for refuge, is a part of our punishment. Let us therefore be contrite, but without anxiety. For powers and times are not gods, but mortal gifts from God. Let us acknowledge our defeats, but without despair. For all societies and epochs are transient details, transmitting an everlasting opportunity that the kingdom of heaven may come, not in our present and not in our future, but in the fullness of time. Let us pray. Chorale. Our Father, whose creative will asked a being for us all, confirm it that thy primal love may weave in us the freedom of the actually deficient on the justly actual. Though written by thy children with a smudged and crooked line, thy word is ever legible, thy meaning unequivocal, and for thy goodness even sin is valid as a sign. Inflict thy promises with each occasion of distress, that from our incoherence we may learn to put our trust in thee, and brutal fact persuade us to adventure, art, and peace. Well, friends, the next time I'm going to see you is Christmas Eve. I hope you'll join in, us, join in with us then. And until that time, have a blessed Advent.